Hi, this is Mike from Cutelicious Kitchens, and today we're going to learn how to do a barbecue pit or a barbacoa pit. This is an easy project you can knock out in a weekend, and it's going to tie in real well with some other videos that we're going to be presenting that'll show you how to make some keto friendly meat dishes like barbacoa tacos or pulled pork or even beef brisket. So this uh, barbecue pit isn't just great for cooking, it's also great for parties. It's super entertaining when you've got a lot of friends and family around and you're able to pull 30 pounds of pork out of the ground. Um, it's also great uh, on a long weekend or a holiday weekend because you're able to get up in the morning and fill the ground with wood and then by noon put meats in and then in the evening pull it out. It's just kind of a day long event for, for family whenever you've got people in into the holidays. So the pit that we're gonna make today is more in the tradition of the big Mexican barbacoa restaurant. So it's a kiln and you're gonna be able to do everything from bread to meats to whatever but it's going to be like a brick oven in the ground when we're done but it's an easy project and we're going to get it done in one weekend and i'll show you how now so before we get started let me show you what the finished product looks like and that's the amount of space that you need it's going to be roughly four feet by four feet square if you've got that much space, you've got enough space for this pit. First, for tools, it's a pretty short list. The first thing that you need is a shovel. A shorter handled shovel is a little bit better when you get into a deep hole, but whatever works for you. The next item is a pair of post hole diggers, and that's basically to just help clear out the bottom of the hole a little bit easier. If all you have is a shovel, it'll still work. And the next item's a rake, and that's obviously to clean up the dirt mess that you're gonna make as you pull that dirt out of the hole. So the next item is probably the most important one, and that is a digging bar. If the ground that you're digging is super hard, you're gonna wanna get one of these. It's a 16 pound piece of steel with a chisel point, and it breaks up the ground really well. Otherwise, you're gonna be digging for weeks, trying to crack open the ground. So now let's talk about materials. Probably the most important decision is the grate. The size of the grate is going to drive the size of the hole. It's going to drive the amount of material, i.e. bricks, that you're going to use. So my opinion is this. Get the biggest grates you can afford because you don't want to regret it later. You're going to put a lot of work into this, and so just get the biggest grates you can afford. So the next item on the list is the lid, and there are a number of different ways you can go with this. One, you could just buy a metal trash lid that's got a handle on it, or you could take some sheet metal and cut it to size, put some eye bolts in as handles, and use that. I wanted something with a little bit of aesthetic appeal, so I bought a replacement fire pit bowl. You can buy those online as service parts, and I added handles, and uh, it came out looking pretty good. So the next item on the material list is brick. The amount of brick that you're going to need is going to be a function of the diameter of the hole and also uh, a function of the depth of the hole. The bricks I used were for circular fire pits and there's two different sizes you can buy. You can buy a three inch thick one and then a four inch thick. I used the three inch thick ones for the body of the hole and then used the large four inch thick ones to finish on the top. And so finally, the last items are gravel and river rocks. Those will help hold heat in the bottom of the hole. Let's just take a look at the concept. This is what I did. It's not necessarily what you'll do if you choose a different diameter grate or if you decide to dig a different depth hole, but this is a guide for you. On the top, I had a four inch ring of brick that was for the, the top trim. And then underneath that, 11 stacked rings of the three inch thick brick. So all together, that's about 40 inches of height. If you duplicate what I do, then I would suggest that you only dig to about 38 inches below so that that top ring sits slightly above the ground. Um, it's just to keep stuff from falling in there, although you may choose to make it flush and avoid a trip hazard. It's up to you, but this is just strictly a guide to give you an idea of what we're going to be doing next. 
Okay, so to break it down real fast, the top four inches is for the top brick ring, the trim ring. The stack of middle brick rings is to accommodate whatever it is you're planning to cook. So if it's a lot of meat, that's going to be sitting on top of the grate in that middle brick ring. Also, if you're going to have a big pot, maybe you're going to use the drippings from, say, the leg of lamb and make a consomme out of that, then that's what's going to be sitting above the grate. So give yourself plenty of room. I gave myself 24 inches. The bottom brick ring is to accommodate the bed of coals that's going to help cook the meat. And you're going to want a bed that's at least 8 inches deep. So 8 inches plus a couple inches for the uh, river rock. Altogether, you need about 12 inches of space underneath the grate. Okay, so what you want now is for the grate to overlap the bottom brick ring by about an inch. In my example, it took 10 bricks to perfectly accomplish this. So next, start digging the hole. Dig it according to the diameter of that bottom brick ring and then to a depth of roughly 38 inches if you're using the same depth I showed earlier. When you get to that target depth, just make sure the bottom of the hole is level because that's where everything is going to start. Hold on to that soil that you pull out of the ground. You're going to need it later when you actually start to use this pit. As I was digging the hole, I also happened to hit some river rock, so I got a freebie in this project. Okay, now that the hole is ready, set that first ring. Make sure it's level. Make sure that when you're stacking the rings on top of each other, that they are alternating, kind of like this mesh-like pattern that you see here. Make sure to use some of that soil to fill any gaps in between the bricks or behind the bricks. This will help insulate the pit. When you're done with the bottom ring layers, set the grate back in there to use as a gauge to set the diameter of the middle ring layers. You want about an inch of clearance between the edge of the grate and the inside diameter of the middle ring layers. Continue setting the middle ring layers until you are just short of ground level. Next, dig back to accommodate the top ring. You'll set the size of that top ring in the same way that you did with the grate. You'll want about an inch of clearance around the outside edge of your lid. Then set the bricks for the top ring. Add about two inches of gravel to the bottom of the pit and then set your river rock in there. Now you're in the final stretch. To make sure everything fit, set the grate and then set the lid. If everything fit, then clean up around the hole and congratulations, you now have a barbacoa or barbecue pit. Enjoy.